Welcome to Functional Philosophy, the show in which I, Charles II, explain and apply Ayn Rand's philosophy, Objectivism. If you'd like to ask me a question on Objectivism or its application, just go to charles2.com slash contact. And my last name is spelled T as in tango, E as in echo, and W as in whiskey. I'm drunk. The world is not free enough for sobriety, nor is it free enough for effective boycotting, which is why I am remaining on Patreon despite the recent controversy. If you're unfamiliar, Patreon shut down Sargon's account because he used the N-word in a technically insulting way, even though he was using it from the perspective of people who think blacks are inferior and would therefore find it insulting, even though Sargon himself didn't. Now, I understand why people would want to boycott Patreon over this, but I'm not doing so out of a sense of defeatism. There is nowhere to go. PayPal is the obvious alternative, but in addition to the organizational conveniences that Patreon provides, there is also the fact that PayPal shuts people down for ideological reasons too. So there is nowhere to go. So it would be foolish of me to engage in a futile, symbolic effort, such as deleting my Patreon account and moving to PayPal or some other service. It is inevitable that Patreon will shut me down if I reach a certain level of popularity. They can accuse me of hate speech at any moment because I hate many people and speak about it often. The other possibility is that I remain so obscure that I never gain Patreon's attention, which would be its own kind of failure. In any case, I am remaining on Patreon until and unless a better alternative comes around. If a better alternative already existed, then I would be there because, to me, Patreon's shutting down of Sargon is not a surprise. I knew Patreon was not a safe place for anyone who strays significantly from the leftist nihilist line. Since the previous controversy, I saw Jack Conti, the CEO, go on Dave Rubin's show, and he did nothing but assure me that Patreon would not protect ideological minorities or controversial speech. All I can say is that I wish Jordan Peterson the best in creating his alternative to Patreon. Now for the questions. Today is a sexy episode. First question. My question is about something Peikoff said in his podcast. He was answering the question, paraphrasing, what is wrong with threesomes? And he said something like, you can't demote a relationship. I think he might have been quoting Ayn Rand. Interjecting here, I don't know if he was quoting Ayn Rand, but I do know Ayn Rand agreed with that view. Back to the question. This answer didn't seem to make sense to me at all. Why can't you downgrade a relationship, say an ex-girlfriend who is now just a friend? What about Dagny and Francisco? Well, they were in exceptional circumstances, and in any case, I'd have to reread the last part of Atlas Shrugged with this issue in mind in order to address their relationship competently from this perspective. But as far as demoting a relationship in general, well, I think it's obvious once you reach a certain level of intimacy with someone, it's difficult to go back to the previous level. If you used to sit on the couch with your girlfriend watching Netflix and you were accustomed to a blanket permission to touch her in intimate ways, then hanging out with her watching Netflix on the couch and not being able to do that would be difficult to get used to. But I am going to sidestep this question because I disagree with a premise it is based on. So I can't actually rationally consider it because it's invalid, because it's based on a false premise. Let me put it this way. Yes, I don't think it's possible to be friends 
with a woman who used to be your girlfriend, but I also don't think it's possible for you to have been friends with her before she was your girlfriend. I don't believe in being friends with members of the sex you're attracted to. So obviously, I don't believe in being friends with an ex. If you like a member of the sex you are romantically attracted to enough to be friends, then you will develop feelings for that person. And then you will be in a situation in which you can manifest those feelings more fully and they are requited, in which case you will become more than friends, or you will be in a situation in which it is not possible to manifest those feelings or they are unrequited in which case being friends is a bad idea and will be a painful, unpleasant experience. Now, this principle doesn't apply in the context of people that you wouldn't be in a romantic relationship with for whatever reason. The most obvious reason here would be an age difference. But within the context of people with whom you could conceivably be in a romantic relationship, I don't believe in friendships. I'm not saying you can't be acquaintances or have a professional relationship or be polite to this person or never cross paths with her, but when I talk about friendship, I'm talking about hanging out. Hanging out with a member of the opposite sex with whom you could be in a relationship, but for the fact that one of you isn't into it or is already taken by someone else... It's a bad idea, and I disapprove of it. So don't be friends with girls. Next question. If you're a man looking for a romantic partner, can you just accept who is available within your context? I'm leaving out having sex with someone who is evil. You said in your podcast, paraphrasing as best as I can, that sexual pleasure is so important that you should get the most you can without any immoral sacrifice. Does that apply to romance as well as masturbation? <laughs> well, you make it sound like I'm saying you should masturbate ten times a day. You make it sound purely quantitative, which is not what I meant. I believe Peekoff was asked this exact question. And I agree with his answer, if I remember it correctly. This is a bad formulation. No, you cannot have sex with the best person around so long as that person isn't evil. That would mean it was okay to have sex with people who are no serious value to you. Now, you don't have to be married to someone or even in love with her in order to legitimately have sex with her but she should be a serious value. And if your criterion is merely that she isn't evil, or rather if your criteria are merely that she isn't evil and is better than everyone else around, then that leaves the door open to having sex with people who don't mean much to you. And that will devalue sex in your mind and mean that it won't be Significant when you find someone who does mean a lot to you. This is the problem with promiscuity. It makes sex an egalitarian act and devalues it in your mind, making it a lower experience than it otherwise could be when you finally find someone you do seriously value. Next question. Can pornography ever serve as a legitimate aid to masturbation? Or are you just being second-handed and relying on some director's imagination and values instead of your own? Ayn Rand also distinguished between hardcore and softcore pornography. Is that distinction meaningful? Do you know what she would have meant by softcore? I'm guessing probably the kinds of things you see in poorly written PG-13 movies today. Well, I assume she meant pornography that is not fully revealing. And yes, I do think there is a meaningful distinction between softcore and hardcore pornography defined as such. Softcore pornography would be the equivalent of wearing lipstick and blush and high heels, all of which accentuate a woman's sexuality, and all of which are valid because they are not fully revealing. Hardcore pornography is the equivalent of walking around naked, open to the sight of everyone. 
That is bad for the reasons I explained in answering the last question, and is also why watching pornography is a bad idea. Now, you could look at pictures, drawings, I mean, and read stories, but watching pornography and enjoying it would require that you evade the fact that the person engaged in the creation of the video you're watching or image you're looking at is doing something immoral and hurting her own life. It's bad and harmful to yourself to open up your most intimate aspects to anyone and everyone. And so if you're watching porn, you would have to evade that in order to enjoy it. And so a rational person who keeps the full context in mind wouldn't be able to fully enjoy it. Now, as I said, erotic drawings or statues or at a certain level of technological sophistication, androids might be okay. But so long as you know that what you're looking at is the result of some actual person harming herself, then it's bad to get pleasure out of that. If you'd like to keep up with everything I do, just go to charles2.com. If you'd like to enable me to do more, just go to patreon.com slash charles2 and become a supporter. Thanks for listening.